Welcome to the second series of travel photography with Wex Photo Video. I'm Matt Parry and I'm a travel photographer. And this time we're in India. We'll be exploring the hustle and bustle of Delhi, India's capital city, before we make our way to Agra, home of the iconic Taj Mahal. Our final destination is an overnight train journey away in the holy city of Varanasi, which sits on the river Ganges. I'll be talking you through my approach, as well as some of the techniques and challenges that you may face as a travel photographer. It's at about 7am now, so we've been on the train for just over 10 hours, 10 and a half hours, something like that. And managed to get some sleep, so it wasn't too bad in the end. Uh, but looking forward now to get into uh, Mughal Sarai, and then from there we'll get a taxi into Varanasi. Hopefully, then we can have a shower and freshen up a little bit because, um, yeah, I think it's needed. Of our three destinations in India, Varanasi was the only place where we had nothing pre planned other than a good idea of what I wanted to shoot and where I would find it. I always find local knowledge is invaluable. It helps getting those shots in a short period of time. So we met up with our guide, Karen Sachin, and he was keen to show us another cultural side to India that we hadn't seen. He invited us to accompany him to his dance lesson. He is learning one of the 10 recognized forms of Indian classical dance called Kathak. Photographically, the light was a challenge in the dance studio and the constant movement made it difficult. However, it was great to experience and this is the sort of thing that you don't see in the guidebooks. And it was great fun to watch Karen actually being put through his paces by his teacher as well. Um, carrying our guide. Um, he's just taken us through a kind of market. Um, this is in the Muslim area of town. So as you can see, it's really busy, it's cool. Did you want your portrait? Because the light's good there. This way? Stand there? Hey. Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people are fascinated by the, the cameras that, that we're using. Uh, a lot of people want their picture taken. Not for any other reason than they want to see what they look like on the camera, really. Oh, careful. Karen has just brought us to a local flower market. So below and behind me, um, you can see everyone selling the flowers, people buying them which I think are the offerings that they will then take down to the river. Um, so it's quite fascinating. All the colours are really popping, really vibrant. So the oranges and the pinks, it's quite amazing. Unfortunately, there's cables running across, which kind of um, cut across a lot of the compositions. But just for a wider shot, it's actually uh, pretty, damn, pretty damn good because the colours down there are really, really popping, even though we're quite late in the afternoon now. So yeah. Just trying to see if I can isolate some compositions. As I say, it's quite hard with these wires, but you know the, the wider angle shot is still very, very nice. The flower market has been a brilliant experience. It's been hot, so it's been quite clammy and quite stuffy actually in the market itself with so many people, but the people have been wonderful. They didn't bother us in the slightest. They just let us get on with taking pictures. They smile when we pointed the camera at them. And really, for the most part, they ignored us. So to get candid pictures, well, that's really what you want. Some of the people were even offering us flowers as well, which is such a nice touch. I've got a necklace made out of flowers from the lovely people behind. Very you. Oh, they want one for you as well. Very you. Chris, they want one for you. Sorry. Yeah. Very nice. Jasmine. I think. <laughs> From the flower market, our walk ended at the Dash Ashwamed Ghat. Now this is where the daily Ganga Arti ceremony takes place. And this has to be one of the most impressive cultural performances that you can see anywhere in the world. So within this ceremony, you'll see a lot of smoke coming off the burning lamps as they circulate around that person. And accompanied by the song and the noises, it made it really atmospheric. From a photographic point of view, the A73 really excels at ceremonies like this. 
the low light capability of the camera, being able to push that ISO to capture clean, crisp shots really is what it's made for. I came away from that with images that I might not have been able to capture with a different camera and really getting it back in Lightroom you can really see that dynamic range. We had pretty good view to be fair and right near the front so um, unobstructed. Using the rear viewfinder to lift it up over a few heads and hopefully get some shots that are actually in focus. Um, the other option is the boats, I don't know if you can pick up on this, absolutely rammed so pretty good view I guess but pretty crazy down there. So we're going to head back now, it's been a long day um, after the train last night and then we'll see what tomorrow brings. It's just before five o'clock in the morning and in the quite rare thing the streets are completely empty. Um, we're just leaving our hotel and heading towards Asigat, which is about 10 minutes or so walk. Um, we've heard there's a similar sort of religious event to the one we witnessed last night, the Gangarati. Um, so we're going to go and see if we can find it, uh, check it out. There are daily Gangarati ceremonies at several ghats, and this one, Asigat, is very similar to the one yesterday, but also very different, so it was worth the early start. This one you were able to move around more, it was quieter so you had more freedom to experience it from different angles and different vantage points and also there were more intimate rituals of worship that you could see and experience. Still early morning, it's about quarter past six. Um, sun's up now, so we're just taking a walk along the river, the Ganges. You can see now a bit more life happening. People coming down to bathe, people coming down to pray. So it's really quite tranquil, it's quite peaceful, so it's really nice. So we're just down by one of the gaps now. Um, just been taking pictures and quite just sitting and watching really watching people just going about their morning rituals, bathing. So it's really just nice sometimes to sit and watch. Taking a few pictures as well, of course. When you come to places like this, you've always got to be aware of cultural sensitivities. You know, these are people bathing, so you know, if you think about it, would we want people watching us shower or washing? Um, so it's nice we've got a local fixer with us at the moment, and you know, he's advising us what we can and can't shoot. And obviously he's around then if any translation is needed just to explain what we're doing if people ask, which they haven't in fairness. But yeah, we're just trying to keep out of the way, but at the same time just trying to find compositions that work as well. While in Varanasi, I was very keen to visit Akushti Wrestling Akara. This traditional form of wrestling is slowly dying out in favour of more modern map based formats. So I wanted to see it while I still could. Uh, the guys are just doing their sort of warm-ups. Um, and rituals before they will start actually resting. So they're just churning up the mud behind, which is where they'll actually be doing it. Um, and once that's all done, then we'll actually see some of the wrestling take place. So before then, warm-ups, rituals, and then onto the mud. The training and lifestyle is a big commitment for these men. They train every single day while wrestling takes place on every day but Wednesday. That's the day reserved for cleaning the Akara. Some of the training materials that they use almost looks quite primitive, you know, it's quite basic. You know, a weight on the end of a bamboo stick or um, a lump of weighted wood. So it seems to work for these guys. You know, they're training quite heavily, uh, running around using the space. Uh, there's a couple of wrestling matches going on at the same time as well. So it's pretty cool. You've got a fella hanging like a chimp just behind you. So I'm going to get a picture of that. I'll try. Oh, wow. What do you think that, mate? I do it every day in the gym, that. I'm good at Please, and the rest. You wouldn't think by looking at this guy doing his sit-ups, but he's 64 years old and he's been training there for just 13 years. It started as a hobby for him, but he now runs the place. The chance to witness these rituals and the wrestling itself was a real highlight of this trip, and it was one of my main photographic goals for Varanasi, so it was really nice to pull it off. The middle of the day now, it's absolutely boiling. It's around 36 degrees, 
Um, shooting out in the street in the harsh light is a bit of a no-go, so what we're going to do is try and head indoors to see some of the textile and silk weaving workers. So as you can see, they're weaving the patterns. Um, what you see on the top is actually the reverse, so the pattern is always underneath. Um, but it's fascinating seeing these old machines in action, and these businesses are passed down from generation to generation as well. I'm just using some of the foreground of the cuddy here, um, just to give a bit of interest to it. We're just at a site where they're dyeing uh, the cloth, so they're painting on it and um, yeah, basically making patterns as well as bigger strips of material that they're painting before it gets turned into clothes. We're starving, so we're just going to get some lunch. I've left all my main gear uh, back in the room, so I've brought along the RX100 Mark V. Um, this just gives me a quality bit of kit that I can fit in my pocket, so I'm ready for any kind of shooting opportunities that we may come across. Although, as I say, we're that hungry, we're just going to head straight there. But of course, being a photographer and in a destination like this, I should have known that was never going to be the case. Sometimes, if you're just popping out to grab a bite to eat, you might want to leave your bulky kit behind. However, being a photographer, I can never be without a camera. So our good intentions to go out for food got a bit waylaid. Um, we came down the river and ended up taking quite a few pictures. You know, kids want their picture taken and just, you know, there's so much to photograph around here. It's hard not to be distracted, really. I guess, you know, if you ever we're coming out without your main kit. This is a good little accessory to you know, keep with you, really. In fact, it's probably more than an accessory. It's a, an excellent camera, one-inch sensor, a great lens, um, decent zoom range, 2470. So it's the equivalent of what I've been using with the main kit, really. It's half past five in the morning, and we're heading down to the Ghats to get on an early morning boat that will take us up the Ganges for sunrise. The sun is just about to appear over the horizon. Um, this is a great time to be out. The temperature's cool, life is starting to happen, people are coming down the banks to bathe. So it really is a nice time to be out and about. A sunrise boat trip on the Ganges is one of the most popular activities for visiting tourists. It is a great way to experience the city coming to life as the sun rises over the opposite bank of the river and lights up the ghats with all the activities taking place. So behind us now is Manakanaka, which is known as the burning ghat. Um, this is where people come and they cremate their relatives. There's no burning going on at the moment, so I think we're okay to take pictures, uh, but it's, it's quite a fascinating sight. We've just come over to the other side of the river. What we're probably seeing here is quite a few tourists, um, Indian tourists, so I think um, there's people behind that from South India, they were, I was just talking to them. So they've come up to bathe in the Ganges as well. But yeah, it's fascinating, fascinating to watch. Sometimes it's worth just putting the camera down for a minute and actually seeing what's, what's going on. On our way back to Asigat, we passed a school where the students were all dressed in these vibrant coloured robes. It really was an incredible sight and thankfully our boatman pulled over so I could jump off and take some pictures. As we made our way back to Asigat, it was a nice time to reflect on our trip as well as my first experience using a mirrorless camera. I've loved using this new Sony. Uh, there's Lots of great features in it, uh, the dynamic range, uh, the electronic viewfinder, the back screen I've actually started using more and more as I've uh, been progressing on this trip. Um, you know, I found it a great feature to be able to actually compose shots that way. Um, the eye autofocus has, has gotten me loads of shots on this trip, so lots of portraits, but also allowing me to do compositions that just wouldn't have been easily achieved in any other way. Um, and also shooting in high ISO, low light, it's been very, very solid. In fact, some of the pictures have been great and perfectly usable, even at 12,800. So yeah, I mean, this is a great travel camera and a great travel combination along with the 2470, so I'd highly recommend this. What three tips would you give for uh, any other travel photographer? One second. Three tips, take a picture first, answer questions later. <laughs> So number one, be curious. You know, that curiosity will force you to go around that next corner and see what's there. It'll make you look in that open doorway. Um, and that's when these pictures, these opportunities will, will come, you know, those ones that you don't expect. Uh, number two, don't be afraid to approach people. In countries like this, the people are exceptionally friendly. They're very open to having their picture taken. So again, just you know, be polite, be courteous. That's really when those great opportunities, those candid moments will arise as well. 
Um, and number three, I guess the most important thing is you're in a destination like this. It's an incredible destination. So just appreciate where you are, appreciate the travel element of it. And, you know, and the photography will, will come as a result. So don't ever let it get you down. If you're not getting the shots you want, uh, just make sure you're enjoying the experience as much as you're enjoying the photography. Right, our time in India is now coming to an end. I'm just rowing us back to shore. So I've just taken us all the way up and down the river. Putting the camera aside while I uh, row us back. Yeah, row us back in circles. Uh, okay, keep it in the. This one? Just this one. You already knew that though, because you, you rowed us all the way up there, didn't I you? I thought we were going back to shore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So our time in India is coming to an end. We visited three great cities in Delhi, Agra, and Varanasi. Good. And I'm just rowing us around in circles now, so we may never get home. But it's been a great experience. And for more great videos like this, visit Wex Photo Video or check out their YouTube channel. I think you probably better do it now. We've probably got further to go now, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah, we have. 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 Your yeah. turn. Oh. <laughs> no, I hope that our second series of travel photography has given you a flavour for this incredible country and its wonderful people. So I hope that this has left you inspired to see it and discover it for yourself. Mm -hmm.